welcome to today's video. Chacho is somewhat and he's just sniffing stuff today as usual honestly. Um, today we're going to be talking about if reptiles are sanitary and just some cleaning tips and ways to keep yourself and your animals safe and if they smell just all things regarding sanitary and cleanliness when keeping reptiles. I've actually had people ask me to do this video for probably like the entire time I've been doing YouTube and I've briefly touched upon their smell um, but I haven't talked about other things so we're making it an entire video and I hope that this will be educational and helpful so the very first thing that we're going to talk about is the infamous salmonella when it comes to reptile keeping so a lot of people are scared to keep reptiles because they hear horror stories about how reptiles can carry salmonella and for people with autoimmune diseases such as myself i've had people reach out and ask me like is it safe and they also want to avoid keeping reptiles because they're very worried with a suppressed immune system getting something like salmonella can be very dangerous and scary so definitely a good idea to talk about something like this. So um, the reasons why I'm not too scared about salmonella and keeping my reptiles, which honestly I was at first, just like all of these other people that are worried about getting reptiles and like seeing these horror stories about salmonella, it doesn't seem right off the bat like a good idea to risk it and get a reptile. However, there are so many different ways to avoid it and it's really not a common thing when it comes to reptile keeping. A lot of the popular stories about salmonella and reptile keeping uh, originated a lot of the times with aquatic turtles. Um, and a lot of the times people were selling uh, these baby turtles that are like the size of a quarter. And for some reason, children were putting them in their mouth or they would be handling these turtles and then you know how kids are maybe you don't know how kids are but especially babies they constantly put their hands in their mouth and they'll touch things and then they put their hands in their mouth so like that's another easy way to get some icky things in the environment in your mouth and aquatic turtles are one of the reptiles that tend to carry salmonella the most um so that's why it becomes dangerous and it was mainly with aquatic turtles although it is possible with some other reptiles as well uh, but the main thing to keep in mind is that as long as you're not putting these animals in your mouth or handling them and then putting your hands in your mouth or eating something afterwards then you aren't going to get salmonella the main thing to do is anytime you handle a reptile the safe thing to do is wash your hands with soap and water after handling. Even if you want to go and handle another reptile, I would recommend washing your hands in between every single time. That's what I do with all of my animals and I'm kind of a germaphobe also because I have an autoimmune disease, I need to be extra careful. So like for me, if I'm touching like a doorknob or going outside ever, I'm washing my hands. If I'm touching a reptile, if I'm cleaning an enclosure, if I'm doing anything within an enclosure or with something that my reptile has come into contact with, I'm washing my hands after. I have seen people eat food with their reptiles or like share bananas with like their iguana and they just handle reptile after reptile and then they go and eat something. This is not safe. I wouldn't recommend doing it. Also, people will be kissing their reptiles. Um, I'm pretty sure that with salmonella, it has to come from their feces some way. Um, maybe not. It could come from saliva i mean you should not be exchanging saliva with your reptiles i feel like that's common sense that's disturbing to think about so you don't want their saliva or their poop to come into contact with you so just wash your hands after handling or doing anything with your reptiles ever and you'll be totally safe and don't stick them in your mouth wise tip of the day um funny story also that's why they don't sell baby turtles they have a entire law where they have to be at least three inches because they <laughs> because they came to the conclusion that three inches would be large enough for a baby to not be able to stick in its mouth we live in a crazy world people i honestly i find all of this strange to this day but you live and you learn number two are reptiles dirty or stinky so 
reptiles are living beings like everything else and all living beings need to eat and they need to poop. So there's gonna be poop. Poop no matter what is not going to smell great. Um, so yeah, if an animal poops, it's gonna stink. The thing is with reptiles is that a lot of them don't eat every single day and they don't poop every single day. So in comparison to a reptile or keeping like a mouse or a hamster or a guinea pig, they don't smell like those animals. Those animals have like hair and fur and all of these other things and they're eating constantly and they're pooping constantly. Reptiles aren't like that. So they're actually probably one of the least amount of like stinky animals that you could possibly own um, just for that fact alone. But when they are pooping, yeah, you will smell it here and there. And that's a good indication to go and spot clean. With reptiles, it's good to spot clean whenever you see any type of waste in the enclosure. That way the animal isn't around it. You don't have to smell it. And then it's a nice, clean, happy environment. Something that I really like about reptile keeping as well is the idea of keeping bioactive enclosures where they basically function as their own ecosystem by introducing microfauna, which are these tiny little bugs like springtails and isopods that will eat away the waste within the enclosure. That will also help to just keep the environment clean and it will keep the environment not smelling as much because it's going to be eliminating a lot of the waste from that setup. So overall, reptiles really don't smell. People assume that they do, and I have had people come over here and they're always shocked that the reptile room just doesn't stink because reptiles are not stinky animals, which is definitely one of their highlights of owning them, especially in comparison to keeping mammals because mammals can be very stinky. I'm pretty sure birds can be pretty stinky as well and messy. So reptiles are a little bit better in those departments when it comes to cleanliness. Number three, can your reptile infect another reptile with some type of sickness or illness? So the answer is yes. It does depend on what it is. Some diseases are not contagious, other types of things are. So some things that are very contagious are mites. So mites are something that a lot of snakes can get or lizards. Mites love these animals because they burrow under their scales and then they feed on the reptile. And the thing is, if you're seeing them, if you're holding a reptile and then you go and hold another reptile and one had mites and then you touch the other one, you can be transferring the mites to the next reptile. So this is why it's very important when you go to like reptile shows to like completely make sure you're washing your hands, scrubbing. If you have animals all over you at a reptile show and then you go home and you wanna handle your own reptiles, I would recommend just changing your clothes, possibly showering in between, just to avoid transferring anything like that because you don't wanna be infecting your animals with anything that they shouldn't have. There are other things such as parasites. So parasites can be found in fecal matter or poop. I'm just trying to be fancy over here and call it fecal matter. I have Crohn's disease, so I talk about poop all the time. So I'm very used to it. People probably think I'm like weird that I'm so comfortable talking about, but it's like, I have Crohn's disease. I'm gonna talk about poop and I'm gonna be comfortable with it. Um, but snakes, if they have parasites, they can be found within their poop. So if you are keeping, this is why it's another reason. There's so many reasons why you shouldn't cohab a lot of reptiles, but if another animal comes into contact with that poop and ingests it in their system, they can get parasites as well. So it just goes into a matter of washing your hands in between handling every single reptile that you own just to be safe and keeping things clean, whether you're using a bioactive setup or you're spot cleaning or both. Honestly, it's best to do both even with a bioactive setup. Uh, but it's good to just keep the environments clean for your animals. That way you're not transferring anything and not transferring illnesses to different reptiles that you have in your collection. Number four, can we as humans infect our reptiles with illness? So this was actually an interesting topic because some people were noticing with COVID that some animals were getting some type of, it wasn't the same symptoms as people, but they were being infected with COVID. I have not heard of anything like that with reptiles. 
Um, I'm pretty sure all human issues can't be transferred to your reptile. Um, but again, they might be carrying something that could go to you like salmonella. So that's why it's important to always be washing your hands and not sticking your tongue near your reptile or eating with them or, you know, eating their poop or touching their poop, cleaning an enclosure, then going and having some lunch. Not the best idea for cleanliness. Number five, can dirty enclosures cause illness to your reptiles? The answer is yes. If you are not properly cleaning your enclosure and you let it get very gross over time and there is like an overload of bacteria, it can cause illness in your reptiles. For instance, um, say you're keeping a ball python, if the enclosure is overly gross and like moist and there's poop and there's bacteria, they can get skin rot, which is not something you want to deal with. I've never dealt with it. I've personally never seen it, I don't think. I mean, I've never dealt with it. I think I've seen pictures on the internet before. Um, but that is from an animal that just is in a gross environment and just kind of sitting in it and it can cause skin rot. There are other bacteria issues that can happen. Um, so it's very important to make sure that your humidity is not like over the top. That's a thing that a lot of people make a mistake with is they keep animals that require high humidity. And then in order to attain that, they just make the environment very wet. So if you have an overly wet environment that is holding on to carrying all this bacteria and there's poop in it, your animal can get sick from that. So it's important to make sure that even if you have a high humidity reptile, that they have a dry period during the day and everything is drying out and then you can re-moisten everything as needed at nighttime. So those are just some sanitary tips. I feel like this is mainly common sense, but maybe you learned something that you weren't aware of before. If you do have an autoimmune disease and you are concerned about owning one of these reptiles, just keep in mind, it is safe. It is not common for people to get salmonella from reptiles, especially like now I feel like it's common sense like you just wash your hands that's all it's the same with like if you are getting raw meat ready if you are gonna make some chicken or whatever you're gonna cook something after you touch something like that you wash your hands it is the same exact aspect when it comes to reptile keeping so I hope that this video was helpful if you guys can come up with any other things that you think should be included in this video or tips I would appreciate it I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video and I will see you guys in the next one